How much you want to bet I could shoot an arrow over the mountains? You want to shoot an arrow over some mountains? You're probably going to need a PSE bow. Well, I'm going to give one away, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. You know how this goes. If you're subscribed to the channel, you're liking, you're commenting, you're entered in the giveaway. Free PSC bow. Why not? Logging. Logging can be scary. Um, as a whitetail expert, as a property owner myself, I've, I've seen a fair amount of things go wrong on certain properties. I've dealt with certain things on my property to make sure that it's not going to um, be done the wrong way because here's the thing about timber guys is if you have the wrong guy come in and cut it you're probably gonna get screwed okay you're gonna get screwed out of out of making good money but you're also gonna get screwed as far as habitat goes in the future and recreating habitat um, for long portions of, of time to come so um, let's get into some of the things that you need to be looking out for when it comes to loggers um, what your plan should be on all properties if at all possible um, for, for the future as far as timber stand improvement goes and what to tell your loggers if they are going to log your property. Let's get into all this good stuff. So there's a lot of things that we've talked about in other videos or upcoming videos um, as far as how much should you be getting paid or how to get paid and um, how to keep a, a logger honest because the logging industry can be a shady one. Like any industry, there's good people, there's bad people, but there's certain things that you should be doing. Um, but let's get a little bit more in depth and maybe it's another question that i should or another thing i should have brought up in the past video but it's another question you should be asking or another thing you should be asking of your loggers okay so i'm going through um some of this stuff right now with a property of mine um and basically you want to make sure that if somebody's going to come in and cut your timber they're going to do it strategically so that it's one it's beneficial based off predominant winds and certain things like that so that you have bedding in correlation with food can hunt it um but the bigger picture, you needed to look at a long-term option, okay? So here's what I would recommend doing. And I'm gonna give you an example of how you can make a ton of money twice, um, two times over in a given situation when logging. So let's say that you have that logger come out. Um, he walks the property with you and you absolutely should walk it with him uh, to understand what you have and, and learn because you don't get a ton of opportunities to work with loggers. So taking any opportunity that you can to try and understand the industry is a good idea and have conversation with them. Okay. So walk through the property and they're going to decide, Hey, we want to cut it at this rate. I'm not a fan of clear cutting, by the way. Um, there's a time and a place, I suppose, depending upon what you have on your property and how do you know what's right or wrong to be clear cutting? I hate to say it, and this isn't a plug for a guy like me, but you should be bringing somebody in that does what I do for a living so that it gets done right the first time and will help you steer you in the right direction and probably save you a lot of money if you, if, versus if you did it wrong. But ask questions, walk through the property, and let's say that you're going to get a select cut done on your property, okay? Let's stay away from that clear cut for a, sec for a second. You're going to get a select cut done on your property. And the logger says, hey, I'd like to take out all these trees. Let's just call it oak. Um, you know, this is the value you're going to get. You're going to get, let's just, let's, let's make this round numbers here. Okay. You're going to get $150,000 for all your oaks. Um, and I'm just throwing numbers out there right now. So guys, so don't get too excited, even though it's possible on certain properties, but you're going to get $150,000. We're going to take out all your oaks. And here's the thing from a st strategic standpoint, I'm not even opposed to taking out oaks. If they're the ones blocking all the sunlight, hitting the forest floor, we can create millions more pounds of forage um, by opening the forest floor and getting rid of oaks that drop acorns at the same time that your neighbors have acorns dropping and all these other things to diversify. Um, you know, we should be diversifying a, a property. But anyway, he comes and he says, we take out all these, you know, based off the shares that we're going to be paying you and things like that, you're probably looking at about $150,000. What I would recommend doing is not taking that $150,000. Maybe only take $100,000. I would strategically log my parcel at somewhere between, and it's it's property dependent, and, and understand that I'm trying to give you straightforward answers as possible, but without somebody like myself coming to look at it or 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 anything like that. And here's the thing, you could have a forester out too, but a forester doesn't look at a property strategically from a whitetail habitat. So yeah, that helps, but it's not the bulletproof way to do it. Um, but anyway, in that case, I would take the 100 grand over the 150 grand. Why? Let's talk about oaks and really every other tree species for that matter in this given situation. Let's say that they go in and they take out that 60 to 70%, we'll call it, of timber. Okay, so they take that out and it explodes. Um, maybe did your controlled burn after and, and the amount of growth that takes place is insane. Um, you know, two, three years into it, you, you, it's exploded. It's beautiful. Um, but you still have some pockets in which you think you could make a little bit thicker and whatever else. So 
that's where the second cutting comes in. And if done strategically with the right timber species, if we cut at about 60 to 70%, maybe it's 50, maybe it's a little bit more than that, um, property dependent, hate to say that to you guys, there's no quick answer to that one um, without somebody seeing it. Your timber in five to seven years, and let's say worst case scenario, five to 10 years, the other timber that was not cut will flourish. The other, let's say they want to take 100% oaks and they only took 70% of them or 60%, of them, the other ones will explode. They will create much more hard mass. Um, they'll create much more um, canopy, which is a bad thing to a certain extent. And that's why we have to go in there and recut. So let's say you bought a property for $500,000. And like I said, I'm just throwing numbers out there. And we cut it for $100,000 the first time. We could have cut it for one hundred and fifty, okay, and took it all. But because we did it in stages and we did it at 100 uh, you know, we took 60, 70% of it for $100,000, that timber exploded in the next five to seven years. And then what happened was we took the same value out. And in some cases, I've seen even more in the second cutting. So because you had the patience to wait and not take that $150,000 up front, and you only took the 100, you might have another 150 on the back end because the other trees might have exploded and matured and become more valuable. And although you might not want to take all of your mature timber off the property, if you're looking to have that thick, nasty property that your, your, your block is currently lacking, that might be the option. And in that case, you make more money diversifying more habitat over the course of time versus cutting everything at once and having one monoculture in a way or, or monoculture looking property you know where it looks all one way is what i should be saying um, and there wouldn't necessarily be a monoculture of one one species coming up but if we logged in two different swaths you have, could make more money and you have a constant flow of income coming in over the course of time that can help pay off that property help you buy your your tree stands and your your all your other you know your gear you could reinvest you could put that into the next property you could do all these things basically cutting in swaths over the course of time can save you money um, make you more money um, and ultimately make your property better from a hunting standpoint as well. So when you guys are logging, you need to think about this stuff amongst a bunch of other things. But that's one thing I felt necessary or felt the need to say that would definitely be necessary today in this video. So if you guys like these tips, if if you want to learn more about the stuff, well, honestly, have somebody like myself out to your property or, or, or even somebody else. Don't screw yourself out of tens of thousands of dollars. I've seen it too often. Um, if you like this stuff, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Um, Always dropping new videos, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.